Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about forms of linear equations. When we first introduced linear equations, we noted that they are equations of the form y equals mx plus b. However, we can represent a linear equation in different ways as well. And just as a refresher, this y equals mx plus b is said to be in slope intercept form. Now, the next form that we're going to introduce is called standard form, and an equation of the form ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are all real numbers, is said to be a linear equation in standard form. And if you didn't know, a real number is a number that can be found on a number line. There are advantages to either form of a linear equation. In standard form, it is typically easier to figure out the x and y intercepts. In slope intercept form, it is typically easier to find the slope and the y intercept. Example 1 wants us to find the x and y intercepts of the linear equation 5x plus 3y equals 10. Then change the equation into slope intercept form. So, I want to figure out the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So I'm just going to make an x-y table really quickly. And remember, the x-intercept is the ordered pair where the y-coordinate is equal to 0. And the y-intercept is the ordered pair where the x-coordinate is equal to 0. So let me just label these. So this is our x-intercept, and this is our y-intercept. And so how we're going to figure those out is we're going to utilize our equation that we have, and we're going to plug in 0 for either x or y. So Let's start off by plugging in y equals 0. OK, so if we do that, then we get 5x plus 3 times 0, which would ultimately just be 5x plus 0 equals 10. And really, we could just simplify that to 5x equals 10. Now, if we're trying to solve for x, we would divide both sides by 5 and we would get x equals 2. So here our x coordinate is 2, and so we would say, just to explicitly say it, we would say that our x-intercept is the point 2 comma 0. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing to find the y-intercept. But now what we need to do is we need to plug in 0 for x. So we'd have 5 times 0 plus 3y is equal to 10. And that's going to be 0 plus 3y is equal to 10, which is going to just be 3y equals 10. And if I divide both sides by 3 now, we'll get y equals 10 thirds, which is the same thing as 3 and 1 third. I'm just going to leave it as 10 thirds. So that is our other intercept. So we can go ahead and write that down below. Y intercept is the ordered pair 0 comma 10 thirds. Now, the last thing that we want to do for example 1 is we want to change our equation into slope-intercept form. I'm going to do that in a different color here. So let me just rewrite 5x plus 3y equals 10. And the way that we're going to get this into slope-intercept form is by solving that equation for y. So we want to go ahead and get y by itself. Now, the first step in doing that is I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. So if I do that, then we get 3y equals negative 5x plus 10. And we're almost 
able to get y by itself, the last thing that we want to do now is we want to divide both sides by 3. So we end up getting, let me scooch over here, y is equal to negative 5x plus 10 over 3. Now, that's not generally how we write a linear equation in slope-intercept form. We want to break it into two separate terms. So algebraically, we are allowed to do this. This is the same thing as writing negative 5 thirds x plus 10 thirds. And so that is our equation in slope-intercept form. And here are our two intercepts. Just as a, a knowledge check, why don't you ask yourself, what is the slope of this equation? Pause the video and think about it for a moment. If you said that the slope was negative 5 over 3, you would be correct. Example 2 says, change the equation y equals 5 over 2x minus 2 into standard form. So recall that standard form looks like ax plus by equals c. So we want all the terms that have either an x or the y on, let's just move it over to the left side. So I have y equals 5 over 2x minus 2. So I'm going to subtract 5 have x on both sides. And if I do that, the right side, that will become 0. And so on the left side, we'll be left with negative 5 over 2x plus y. And on the right side, we will be just left with negative 2. And believe it or not, we're done. That's the equation in standard form. So I'm going to go ahead and box my answer there. Part B says, what are the x and y intercepts of the linear equation in part A? So before we even put it into standard form, here we had it in slope-intercept form. And notice that it's in the form y equals mx plus b. And it turns out that whenever you have an equation in slope-intercept form in the form y equals mx plus b, the y-intercept is always going to be the ordered pair 0, comma, b, and whatever that number happens to be. In this case, our b value is negative 2. And so what we're going to find is that our y-intercept is going to be the point 0, comma, negative 2. So I'm going to box that. And you might be asking, well, how do we know that's the case? Or how can we check? If I made my input-output table, so here's x, y, we know that the y-intercept is 0, comma, something. So what you could do is you could plug in 0 and check what our output would be. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have y equals. 5 halves times 0 plus, sorry, that should be a minus, 2. Now, y equals 5 halves times 0 is just 0 minus 2. And if we simplify that, 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So that is the value that is going to go here. So we have 0 comma negative 2. Oh, look, that checks out compared to what we had written previously. Now, if we want to find the x-intercept, we would plug in 0 for y and figure out what the x value is there. So you can plug that into either form. I'm going to go ahead and use the standard form. So let's scroll down a little bit. and. I'm going to plug in 0 for y, so I have negative 5 over 2x plus 0. So instead of y, I replaced it with 0, and we say that that's equal to negative 2. So if I simplify that a little bit, that's going to be negative 5 halves x 
equals negative 2. And what I can do at this point is I want to get rid of the denominator, so I can multiply both sides by 2. If we do that, this 2 will divide with that 2, so we'll be left with negative 5x is equal to, and on the right-hand side, we have negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4. And at this point, I want to divide both sides by negative 5. And if we do that, we get x equals negative 4 divided by negative 5 is just 4 over 5. So I can go ahead and erase that question mark now and replace that with the numeric value 4 over 5. And so here I'm going to write that our x-intercept is the point 4 over 5 comma 0. Part C says, what is the slope of the line in part A? I'm just going to rewrite that so we can remind ourselves. The equation was y equals 5 over 2x minus 2. And so the slope is going to be the numeric value that is the coefficient of x. So our slope is the value 5 over 2. All right, part D says sketch a graph of the line from part A and label the intercepts on your graph. So let's go ahead and draw in our axes first. So I'm going to use a ruler here just so that I can get this a little bit straighter. So there is my y-axis. And I'm going to make my x-axis right there. So let's label those y and x. Now, there's a few different ways that we can go about graphing this. We do have our intercepts. So our y-intercept is 0, negative 2, and our x-intercept is 4 over 5, comma 0. So in theory, we could just plot both of those points and then connect them with a line. I'm just going to offer a different way of graphing, but either way gives you the correct answer. Please do whatever you're more comfortable with. So recall that our equation in slope-intercept form was y equals 5 over 2 x minus 2. So looking at this form, we know that our y-intercept, again, is 0, comma, negative 2. So I'm going to plot a point at 0, comma, negative 2. So I'm starting at the origin, which is the point 0, 0 and I'm moving down two units. And we also know that the slope was 5 over 2. An another way of saying that a lot of people or a lot of textbooks and stuff when you're graphing linear equations will refer to this as rise over run. So the 5 would be the rise part, and the 2 would be the run part. That tells us that at our starting point here, our y-intercept, we're going to go up five units. So one, one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to go right two units, one, two. So I kind of put some smaller dots to indicate the positions I was moving in. But our next dot is right here at the point 2 comma 3. Now, really, that's enough to create our line. We just need those two points, and I can connect them. But just for good measure, I'm going to go and do that one more time. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then to the right two units. So just for good measure, I'm going to use three points. And now I can use my ruler and connect those points. Okay, so I'm going to connect those. 
and then put arrows to indicate that they're going on in both directions. So that is how we would graph that line.